Words and music greatly influence the things I create. Whether it's a song lyric from a favorite song or a one to two word phrase, I'm inspired to combine strong visuals with language to create a feeling or mood. And with Taylor Swift's upcoming album, The Tortured Poets Department, even without hearing a note yet, I'm inspired by the idea of it. From the muted color palette to the use of the typewriter and handwriting, and of course, some of the dramatic themes hinted in the song titles, this album's artwork, aesthetic, and concept are the epitome of all things I love. So, just for fun and to feed my soul, I'm creating art every day inspired by the album I haven't heard yet. What's interesting about doing this before hearing the album is I'm using my own interpretation to make up stories of how I imagine these songs will unfold. Then, after listening to the album, I'll be able to compare and see how close I was. I intend to create one piece for each song title off the album, but first up is track number 13, I Can Do It With A Broken Heart. This one immediately caught my eye. I love a good heartbreak song, and I knew I wanted to do this one first. I'm using this A6 320 gram handmade paper to create a piece for each song title. I love the texture of this paper and the uneven torn edges, and it helps reinforce the concept of the album. The common thread throughout each piece is I want to use the typewriter in some way, whether that be for all or at least some of the words. I'm using a Smith Corona DeVille 470 electric typewriter, one with more modern features, but it does the trick for what I'm after. One of the toughest things is getting the paper through the roller just right, making sure it's not crooked and doesn't get stuck, especially since this is a delicate paper. I use pencil marks to roughly outline where I want to type out each of the words. This helps with alignment and to avoid mistakes, because once your paper is in the typewriter, it's really hard to see where your words are on the smaller paper. You'll notice the ink doesn't show up that well, and that's due to the texture of the paper. It's much darker on thinner copy paper. Later, I thought of a tip of simply typing out the letters another time or two to hit it with more ink. You just have to remember to use the backspace key and hit with the same letter. For the broken heart part of the phrase, I knew I wanted to scatter these letters, much like something broken and shattered to pieces. So I used the ruler to adjust the line and purposely unalign the letters. I also tested out on another piece of paper with a graph background. I played around with other pens like a brush marker to underline and a red pencil to circle the words broken heart. The idea behind this, the concept and idea behind the visuals for this is to mark up the text like a writer proofreading who's circling and crossing out words and connecting new ones. The next song title I was drawn to is Track number 10, Who's Afraid of Little Old Me? For this one, I wanted to add a bit of collage. I had this black and white photo torn from an old magazine or book. I liked how there was a silhouette of a person with a long shadow shown really small in this vast sand landscape. I tore up different parts of it to compose a new scene. I used a bit of gouache paint to add color to the background and enhance the separation from the sky and the silhouette of the person. I used misty blue color on top and a lavender on the bottom. Then I used the typewriter to add the words. Since the magazine image is glossy, the typewriter ink didn't stick, so I used a Micron 005 fine liner to color in the number 10. I purposely wanted the word me to be off on its own next to the silhouette. 
The third and final piece is for track number five, So Long London. Starting with some pencil outlines of where I want the words to go, I used the typewriter to add So Long at the top and then drew a horizontal line to add custom script lettering for London. I used an extra fine brush pen to create this, adding some flourishes on the D and N. Of course, I had to seal the end of the session by marking each creation with the date stamped on the back. Here are the completed art pieces and how they look together as a series. They feel cohesive and part of the same story, which is the goal. Let me know which one is your favorite or which song you're most curious to hear off the album on April 19th. And if you enjoyed this video of a glimpse into my creative process, you might want to check out one of these videos next.